Chloe Rose, what a beautiful name. Thank you so much for making some time and being part of Gentle Touch. So you'll be part of the se- uh, you'll be part of the season of inspirational females. Chloe, tell me about you. Oh my gosh! First of all, thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here, and thank you for asking me to share my story. I mean, yeah, where do I begin? So currently, I am a yoga and meditation teacher. This started off as a business for me, but now I do it more just as a passion. Okay. Um, and I'm actually a lifestyle transformation coach. So I help people to completely transform their lives, starting with their health and then com- just completely transforming from within through changes in lifestyle, changes in diet, Mm -hmm. and completely transforming in ways that I have. Um, This year has just been such an incredibly pivotal point in my life. Uh, So I'll just wind back to two years ago, you know, Mm -hmm. we all went through this huge change. I think a lot of us were completely swept off our feet so I was working in in Indonesia for almost five years I was managing a resort and this was it was a very stressful job it wasn't really in alignment with me I always knew that um but I was doing it because I loved living there how did you end up there like you're where are you from originally London from like, London yeah okay I'm from London yeah um but I okay so we can go back a little bit more so when when I was younger I was your typical London teenager I got into drinking and partying and drugs from a very young age from the age of 16 I was taking heavy drugs like what was you taking at the age of 16 cocaine ecstasy ketamine how was you getting your hands like where was where was you take like at festivals clubs so I would I had like a fake passport uh-huh. going into clubs, just like get dressed up in high heels, yeah, yeah. go to the club, get in the door, then take my shoes off and just put like <laughs> my pajamas back on and <laughs> go crazy. Um, but it was all just a, a pattern of escapism, you know, and it was I always I felt very um, when I was younger, very pushed into mm-hmm. education. Mm -hmm. and very much forced into doing things but I was never guided towards doing things that I was passionate about so I was always told like you have to go to university and you have to be successful and you have to make lots of money but you have to do it this way I was never given the chance to explore what do your parents do Um, my mum's an interior designer wow so she's creative yeah what she's about that? Um, I don't know my dad actually so okay. I'm just I'm an only child with okay. a single mum okay mm-hmm. applause to mums because um I'm basically my dad left when I was in year six so mum took the full responsibility and to be honest it's not easy because like you I was going out clubbing underage and yeah. the truth is you don't know now that I'm older now that I see things from a different perspective like I'm a lot more older and I have a lot more life experience than when I was a teenager I'd be 14 in a club what is a fool like you know you don't know who it will be at that club. You don't know the intentions of that individual. And I was so kind and I was so bubbly and I would be drunk and I'm like talking to everyone. And it's like, the world isn't like you are. Like, you know, no. because you're so naive, you're so bubbly, you're so sweet. It's like, there's no evil in you because you you haven't gone through any element of pain or, or like, you know? So it's mm-hmm. like, you don't know how cold people could be. So uh, the the circle that you're with when you're going out clubbing, taking all these hard drugs, where are they now? Um, I don't. I'm not really in contact with any of them. I have a few friends who I'm still close to, and they've been on a similar journey to me. So it's almost like some of them are still in that same that same mentality, you know, of of living for the weekend in the nine yeah, to yeah, five yeah. and then partying all weekend. Yeah, yeah. They're still they're stuck in that cycle, but unfortunately. I can't stay friends with them because that's not my life anymore. Like I don't drink, I don't drink alcohol at all now. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't take any drugs. I don't even use pharmaceutical medicine. I use completely natural ways mm-hmm. of healing. So for me, it's just, I'm just in a completely different reality. But luckily, some of my friends, a couple of my good girlfriends, they've had a similar journey to me, where they've realised that you know you we have to move on, otherwise we'll be stuck in that cycle forever. It's it's so important you said that because. Because, um, because your journey is going to be different to others. And just like you will be able to make it. I've got friends that like say, like I was, I remember my, I was, I was, I was hanging out with a lot. 
I was hanging out with people that were a lot more older than me. So mm-hmm. I remember I was 12 years old and someone said, try weed. And then, mm-hmm. and then I was just like looking at them, but something always, I was very protected. Like we would be angels or be like yeah. at, at that time when I was like given weed at an age of 12 years old, my friend's older brother came in and said, what are you doing? Why are you giving that to her? And he, and he was like <laughs> four or five years older. So then they looked at him and they backed off. So mm-hmm. they, they like stopped but it just goes to show that like like you said not everyone's going to be on that journey and it's like that same people they're still on drugs and even mm-hmm. in the physical aspect you can tell like the under eyes you can tell yeah. they are heavily into substance mm-hmm. you can tell like and just the way they act and they just live for the weekend and they live for that high and it's like and it's like you know when you say that we've taken a different route it's like you want to be able to bring everyone with you and you can't bring I remember I bumped into them one of my friends like I grew up with him and um it's like I wanted to hang out with him because he shouted my name and he's like yeah babe, we're going to this after party and we're just gonna get a little mm-hmm. bit of coke and, and whatever and it's like physically like my energy like something inside me said said no like you can't yeah. hang, like like it rejects it something inside you repels the circle the environment and you just say this isn't for me I'm not 14 I'm not 15 I'm not 16 this isn't what I do now yeah and that's empowering it's hard though but once you once you do start saying no and once you actually feel how it feels to be human again that's the only way I can describe it because so many years of my life I used drugs and alcohol just to kind of mask my emotions and masked trauma and pain that I'd been through as a young woman so I used that just to mask it all and also I was very very shy in school like I had terrible acne Mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't believe it now you wouldn't you have flawless skin girl (laughs) it's from the superfoods um but thank you I yeah I had terrible acne I was a little bit overweight I was very 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 shy so I really used drugs and alcohol to give me this false sense of confidence Mm -hmm. you know so for me stopping that was a scary journey it was hard but then at the same time when you stop using these substances you start actually feeling all these senses of being a human Mm -hmm. that you never really felt but some people don't like that some people don't like that some people are scared of it because it's a new experience you know we all experience it when we're children it's Mm -hmm. like that excitement for life again but when you've been masking your emotions for such a long time yes when you stop all the substances it can feel like a kind of a waterfall of Mm -hmm. of emotions and it does bring back a lot of traumas and a lot of issues from your childhood that are yet to be dealt with but when you do actually go through that it's just incredible the feelings that you feel after you actually sit down and deal with your emotions when you let the anger come through when you just let yourself cry your eyes out even if you're feeling shame fear and doubt when you let yourself feel those feelings how you feel afterwards is incredible you know they say on the other side of fear is freedom we have to feel the emotions, you know, the, um, our emotions are the only real things in our human mm-hmm. consciousness. Our thoughts aren't real, but our emotions are real. Our emotions are vibrations. So we have to let those uh, vibrations work through us in order for us to elevate and vibrate higher. So yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a long journey. <laughs> you're, you, you're very, very brave to be able to, to, to be able to go through those emotions because it's not easy like crying yourself to sleep waking up like just like anxiety depression like you know like it's not easy PTSD and it's like to be able to sit there and deal with it and and do it on a slow journey and and just you know like it's brave but it's extremely hard um I also want to raise this because we're on this subject um I was having a conversation with a friend and we were talking about like different like environments and clubbing and drugs and and all this um a lot of girls so it's like she went to an after party and she thought her friend was going to this after party and then I was like babe like were you okay like if you're so alone and all these drugs are being taken and she says to me babe like I passed out and then when she woke up she had one of the guys on her 
Mm. So, it's so I, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I was like to her, are you okay? Did you get yourself checked out? And she says, yeah, I did. But it's like some girls out of guilt, out of shame, out of embarrassment, do not proceed because that is technically rape. If if yeah. you have not consented, if you have passed out, it makes it makes you vulnerable. And I feel like some girls don't know the dangers of what can happen. Mm-hmm. This is such an important subject. I'm so glad you brought this up mm. because I have been in that situation. I was actually, I've been sexually abused a few times I'm so sorry when I was that. under, it's okay. I'm, I'm healed from it now. And, you know, it's, and I think I would say 95% of mm. all young women in our country and all over the world have been through these situations. They have, but we are conditioned to believe that it's our fault Mm -hmm. because we were drunk but that's not true at all because we I was never given any guidance as a young woman no one ever told me what was right or what was wrong I didn't have a father so I never had that masculine figure in my life to show me what a man should be like or how a man should treat me so I was just constantly searching for attention from anyone you know but of course I didn't want to be any any sexual contact with people that I didn't know but we do get taken advantage of in these situations and this is one thing that I really am passionate about is empowering women to talk about these things because it was it's only like I'm 31 years old now Mm -hmm. And it's only been in the last three years that I've actually accepted the fact that I was sexually abused and raped yeah, yeah, when I was yeah. younger. Yeah, yeah. Because before that, I was using the drugs and the alcohol to block it out, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I always blamed myself. I always said, if I hadn't have been drunk or if I hadn't mm-hmm. have been mm-hmm. in that situation, it wouldn't have happened. But that's completely wrong. We as women, we need to stop doing that. We have to stop blaming ourselves because it is not okay for a man to take advantage of a woman you know it's it's very easy to know if someone is in control of what they're saying and if they're not you know yeah. a woman who is drunk what, what or, you said is so powerful mm-hmm. right there you know you know that bit and it's like sometimes people misjudge it or the guy will mislead it and out like you're giving me mixed mixed signs and da, 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 but it's no. not like that no absolutely not you know if a woman is you know I that's one of the experiences I had where I had someone had given me a line of what they said was cocaine but it was actually ketamine right so I completely lost control of my body like I couldn't even move I had to just go lie down in bed because I couldn't speak I couldn't move so I wasn't even physically capable of saying no stop you know and I got taken advantage of and then he went around telling people that we had slept together and I was so ashamed of that that I couldn't even stick up for myself and what I just want to like the message that I want to share for young women is that please talk about it Mm -hmm. if this happens to you please 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 talk about it because that situation ate away at me for so many years and Mm -hmm. if I had just told someone the truth about what happened that would that weight would have been lifted you yeah, know yeah. and there's no shame in it at all we are just conditioned to feel shame in and, I, and, I, and I feel like sometimes like say for example with my friend I feel like she didn't I like because I know her so I feel like there's an element of shame there's guilt and it's like the hoo-ha of the family the hoo-ha of the career the hoo-ha of the workplace it's like she hasn't gone she hasn't attended work today so it's like reliving all those moments constantly if you then pursue charges or if you like you know it's like for young girls how can how do you feel we can best support them in it because I was talking about I was talking about something completely different and then obviously we got we got to the subject of after party but in no way did I know she was attending these kind of parties in no way did I know let alone did I know she was hanging out with with that crew in no way did I know she then went to an after party on her own thinking someone else was going to be here to look that came as a surprise for me so all I could say was babe did you get yourself checked out but it's like how can we now support other girls Mm -hmm. I mean the only thing that I can say from personal experiences Mm -hmm. all of these things that I've been through and experimenting with partying and drugs and alcohol and sex like none of that brought me happiness Mm -hmm. none of it none of it and I would just really encourage young women to know that you don't have to do all of that and you don't have to 
yeah you don't thank have you to chloe do that. thank you yeah. for saying that because i you know i don't regret anything in my life because it's made me who i am today yeah, yeah, yeah. but if i could speak to my younger self mm. i would tell her the power of self-respect and loving yourself because if i, I feel like you're gonna make me cry chloe oh, oh girl please <laughs> If I had loved myself 10 years ago in the way that I do now, I can't imagine the position I would be in right now, you know, and it's these things that happen to us, these situations, even if you don't get physically abused, but even Mm -hmm. if you just feel threatened by a man Mm -hmm. or put in an uncomfortable situation, these things can take years to heal from. They really can. But by loving yourself and respecting your body and knowing that you don't have to get drunk and you don't have to party and you don't have to impress people. You don't have to liberate. I know this is very um, this is so special because um, because I've been situations where I've been where like. I've been in a relationship where like it's like oh like try it like like to the point where I'm forced to take certain substances like I don't want to and it's like if you don't want to you shouldn't be in a position where you should have to yeah. that ain't that ain't real love babes whoever tell you that's cool whoever tells you like your granny acting 80 whoever t- babe that ain't love first of all that ain't love second of all self-love third of all self-respect uh mm-hmm. fourth of all self-worth so just like like we're, we're talking on the subject right now if I could tell my younger self I would say listen get yourself out of that situation ASAP for you to be able to give love to someone, you've got to love yourself. And there's no love taking certain substances that you don't want to. Like, if you don't want to love, if you don't want to go down that route, you shouldn't have to. Yeah, uh, I have to add on that as well, because I love what you said about someone forcing you to do mm. something or you feeling like someone's forcing you. And, and this goes for anyone. This mm. doesn't have to be a romantic partner or a boyfriend. This can be a friend, a family member, mm. your boss, a work associate. If there is someone in your life who makes you feel guilty for not doing something or tries to force no, no, their no. opinion on you, uh-huh, uh-huh. they do not love you. Mm. They do not. I've had people in my family who've made me feel guilty for my certain life choices. That's not love. We need to put our focus and attention and surround ourselves with people who support us for what we do and for being ourselves. And that's something I wish I had learned when I was younger, that I was just surrounding myself with toxic people Mm -hmm. who were just feeding into this toxic behavior. I had relationships where I was completely controlled like I wasn't even allowed to choose what clothes I wore Mm -hmm. to that extreme point and I think a lot of young women don't even know what it feels like to be a free and powerful woman but we have to we have to be aware of who we're surrounding ourselves with of course of course what what you what you said was so powerful you know that bit where you said um I was in such a controlling relationship. How was you able to get out of that? Because it's not easy to get out of that. It's a freaking hard nightmare. It is a nightmare. Like, mm-hmm. like to be able to, to start that recovery process, to able to like find your voice, it, to be able to speak up for yourself, to be able to voice your opinions. I don't like that. I don't want to do that. I want to be on my own. I don't want to. It's hard mm-hmm. because if you're controlled to that extent, it is not easy. No, it's so hard. And I, I actually tried to end it three times and it was only on the third time that I managed to do it so yeah this is something I'm I'm really happy to share about because I was just completely controlled and every time I would kind of find a bit of confidence and try to end it he would somehow manage to guilt trip me back into the relationship and the only way that I was able to end it was I went like I literally went on holiday for two weeks but literally just like just left like well, I was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. going on holiday like with my family went away for two weeks and it was only being completely outside of the situation mm-hmm. was I able to look at it from an outside perspective and be like How, why have I wasted two years of my life with this man so anyone who's going through this like even if you have nowhere to go find a friend or a distant relative or someone that you can go and stay with just to remove 
remove yourself from that situation because that is the best thing you can do because if you're still in that situation you're never going to gain your power you need to remove yourself from the situation so you can see it and then you can start building yourself up build the confidence it's not something that you can just be done overnight because that person who's manipulating you knows exactly what they're doing so you and you need that distance between you where that person can't come and find you and come and take you away you need that distance to gain your power and sometimes that means leaving everything behind that means just taking your keys and taking your oyster card and taking whatever you have in your wallet and just bouncing that means closing the door and leaving everything behind and not looking back that's what that means that doesn't mean oh my god but let me get my purse let me get my shoes let me get my lingerie let me get my socks no sometimes you're gonna have to leave everything inside and just go and as hard as it may seem like oh my god my things and and my my souvenirs and all my clothes and and all my collections and whatever it is babes trust me money will come you'll get the collection back you'll get the bags back you'll get the clothes back whatever but like sometimes you need to be able to just step away walk away and it's just for your sanity for your mind your freedom is so much more valuable than anything money can buy. My gosh, yeah. I, if in that relationship, I lost a lot of material things like my TV and all kinds of things, but I didn't care mm-hmm. because the second I knew that it was over and I was out of that relationship, that was just like one of the best years of my life because I rebuilt myself. You know, I lost loads of weight, started going to the gym, started building up my confidence. So yeah, like you said, it's just do it, just get, get away get out of the situation yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent and sometimes it's not easy sometimes like you'll find comfort in the littlest things even if it means sitting in the park bench just crying like maybe yeah. just just maybe just be able to like take a fresh breath of fresh air just to be able to hear the birds singing like whatever that may mean to you whatever freedom may mean to you at this point is your definition of freedom don't let anyone else's definition of freedom change that I don't even know where that came out but that just that just came out so <laughs> Love that. <laughs> I know right things just stop blurting out my mouth and I'm like oh my god okay Chloe so so we we went through the stage in your teenagers when when was when when did the pivotal start come mm-hmm. this is a great question so yeah well so from um before the kind of crazy partying I was also put on a lot of medication for my skin mm-hmm. as well so I was actually on pharmaceutical medication from the age of 12 that's so from very young age, that's very 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 young, very young. So from the age of 12 and then going up into 16, adding more drugs into my system, just completely. What kind of GP do you have? Oh, (laughs) yeah, it's questionable. Um, So it got to the point where I was at about age 24. Mm -hmm. Um, I was getting to the point where the kind of crazy partying was slowing down a bit, Mm -hmm. but I was heavily dependent on drug and alcohol so I would come home from work and drink a bottle of wine and have like a line of coke like on a on a Wednesday Wednesday. it was getting to the point where where it was worrying you know it was worrying and I I knew it in myself and I knew did did you know like did you know this is an issue like I'm taking a line on a Wednesday like did Mm -hmm. yeah yeah? I, I I knew it but at the same time I couldn't bear the reality of normality okay okay so I was doing it because I was sick of being in that cycle of working nine to five and being miserable and being what was you working as nine to five what was this in the Nisha or was this here in the UK no they this was here in the UK what was you doing as your nine to five events events manager manager. so I was working in an office um but then at weekends I'd go and work at events so it was very full on yeah Yeah, it was always full on um but at this point you know I was I had a lot of physical issues my skin was still bad I was Mm -hmm. suffering with extreme fatigue so I would always feel tired and Mm -hmm. I would be like falling asleep at my desk at work I also had a lot of gut issues so I had Mm -hmm. IBS Mm -hmm. I would get a lot of problems and cystitis you know where it hurts Mm -hmm. when you pee all of these things and I was just like there was something wrong and I'd been to the doctor so many times um I'd also been on the contraception pill for about eight years that's a very long time it's a very long time and they put this they put me on it for my skin and they never told me of any side effects nothing um and I noticed that I was getting really depressed as Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. so there'll be some days where I just wouldn't want to leave the house 
ever but something sort of clicked within me that was like I need to try something new I need to kind of try something for myself because ever since the young age I've just been given all these things given 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 but why why aren't I happy why aren't I healthy why aren't I thriving and so at this point around the age 24 I just decided to try becoming vegetarian no one had sort of suggested it to me it was just something I tried I had a friend who was a vegetarian and she was seemed very happy and very healthy and very thriving so I was like what have I got to lose I'll try it and within two weeks of cutting out red meat my energy levels were through the roof so I wasn't fatigued anymore I was able to get up out of bed at like 6 Mm a.m and feel actually excited to get up Um, and this kind of spurred me to start taking on things like yoga and gymnastics and actually start getting excited about using my body whereas before my exercise would be taking drugs and partying (laughs) so this helped me to sort of flip that And then because I felt so good, I just continued. So I started cutting out chicken and then fish. This was about a a six week period. And I started feeling better and better. My skin started to get more glowing Mm -hmm. and I was just feeling really good I lost a lot of weight because I was you know before that I was depressed and I was on the contraceptive pill so my hormones were up and down I was just eating a lot and comfort eating but then when I started cutting out these foods just something was clicking within me Mm -hmm. that made me realize maybe I have the power to heal myself Mm -hmm. and that in itself was just such a profound moment in my life giving me as a woman who had been through so many difficult experiences that gave me a sense of power knowing that I have just made this choice to change my diet and I felt better than I have in about 12 years you know so this really opened my eyes and for me changing my diet and lifestyle this also um, kind of spurred on my spiritual awakening as well Mm -hmm. I started questioning things so I started questioning why have I never been told about diet and lifestyle choices why have I never been told what is put in my food why have I never been told where my food comes from so I just went on this this crazy sort of spiritual educational rampage of of learning about everything and then I just carried on with the healing and I just became plant-based so I completely well are you plant-based now yeah plant-based congratulations girl thank you I have been where where do you where do you tend to shop (laughs) where do you do your groceries is there like any shop or um so I order usually online from Riverford's organic farm so I get boxes like fruit and vegetables that get delivered straight from the farm to the door but I also am partnered with a nutrition company Mm -hmm. called Platinum Superfoods got it um so these are all my my like my green juices that I have every day I have like a tart cherry juice that I drink at night time and these are actually the purest organic foods on the planet right now like they've won awards okay so it's yeah it's it's would you would you owe that to your clear skin because you have very good skin Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so I've only partnered with this company in the last six months and that is how we call it the superfoods glow (laughs) yeah 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 no it's good Um, it looks looks good thank you thank you yeah and uh, most people don't realize the the gut brain connection Mm -hmm. and this was was mind-blowing for me because that's it has really what has been changed me you know I've managed to cure myself of anxiety depression IBS acne eczema asthma all of these th- things through just choosing what I put into my body I love and it I love it say say, then, for, say for example when when you started changing everything like while you was going um vegan then going veg- uh, uh plant-based th- was you ever having withdrawal symptoms throughout no, no no but there were because I've been plant-based for seven years now. okay so it's been very up and down. Okay. Because the problem what the problem is for a lot of people when they choose to go plant based, they're not educated on nutrition. Okay. So you you can't just go plant based and be healthy. Mm-hmm. It's really important to understand like where the nutrients come from. So for example, um, you know most people say you have to eat beef right to get your protein. Yeah. But actually, cows eat grass. So if, if we eat wheatgrass, 
like the, the grass straight yes. from the source yes. we get all of our vitamin b12 mm -hmm. all of our calcium all of our a's like we get that but straight from the source we're not getting it secondhand from the cow so the problem is a lot of the time when people cut out the meat they're not taking the wheatgrass they're not having the green juices yeah, so they're yeah. not placing the minerals right so this this what happened to me in the first year of being plant-based I felt incredible because I lost so much weight I had this huge shift in energy from stopping eating because meat and dairy are the two one of the two highest inflammatory foods on the planet and people don't know this yeah, 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 um yeah. So you automatically, you know, you lose weight, you you lose inflammation, you start feeling incredibly energized. But then I wasn't replacing my body with the nutrients. So yeah. my health kind of started to go down again over the years because I was eating the vegan junk food and the, the vegan cheeses and lots of bread and pizza and all of these things. What do you so, replace yeah, cheese with? Um, I don't eat cheese anymore. But what do you replace it with? Like what could, say for example, for me, what could be my mm -hmm. replacement like i've replaced milk with soya mm -hmm. um what could be my replacement for cheese you should try oat milk organic oat milk's nicer than oh, soya but I it's think. very watery mm, it depends on the brand yeah mm -hmm. do you have any particular brand because the ones i i've come across are very like watery almond is okay like it's okay i wouldn't be like hoo-ha yeah <laughs> um there's one called Oh gosh, you put me on the spot now. Rude Health is really good. Rude Health. Rude Health, yeah. And then there's one called Oti Bruce as well. Oh, I'm looking to that girl. They're really nice because they're organic, but they're always on special, like in the supermarkets, but they're organic. So that means they haven't been chemically processed as well. So they're really clean, really good replacements for milk. Um, in terms of cheese, like, yes, I was a cheese lover. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. Uh, um, but because it's really interesting because when you start putting these superfoods into your body so I have like two or three green juices a day wow because these give you all of the nutrients mm -hmm. that your body needs to thrive you stop craving things because I was a massive chocolate addict like chocolate and cheese and I was you know smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol but now because I'm putting all of these greens and all of these vitamins and minerals into my body I no longer crave things like that now and if I eat an apple that's not organic I could it tastes like cardboard to me really like I crave organic fruits and vegetables do you Mm -hmm. oh babe yeah. good babe organic is not cheap you know like I went to I buy went from to, the farms buy from the farms it's from cheaper the, really from yeah kid you not we went to a shop to a local shop and then like these most beautiful apples like they were like it could have been from a snow white disney movie like <laughs> they were so beautiful guess how much I paid for three apples I paid five pounds for wow. free yeah yeah free. <laughs> they tasted amazing and they were huge but like I've never paid for free like five I've never paid five pound for free apples well this is the very very sad and corrupt thing about our system that we live under at the moment okay because organic means that fruits and vegetables have been grown in natural soil without mm. any chemicals right that is how that is the food that we should all be divinely given to as our birthright right we should be consuming that food but all of the food that we buy in the supermarket that's not organic has been sprayed with glyphosate exactly. and pesticides right and this is because there's just too much of a demand for consumerism but it's not necessary do you know how much how much food wastage there is in this country like mm. it's not necessary everything could be grown and sold organically in this country with the right leadership and the problem with consuming foods that aren't organic is that they actually ruin the inside of your gut right so when oh. you eat these pesticides mm -hmm. and glyphosate they actually glue down the lining of your stomach right so when you eat other foods your body can't absorb the nutrients mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're getting cancer that's why we're getting autoimmune disease that's mm -hmm. why we're getting ibs leaky gut syndrome asthma eczema all of these things are related to to our gut if you could recommend one thing to anyone right now like with regards to lifestyle with regard to one product with regards to diet what what would it be Oof, wow 
that's hard. Well, what I would recommend is do it. You need to, you can't just start a new lifestyle, Mm -hmm. right? You can't just dive in the deep end, but what you do need to do is clean the inside of your body. So you need to start with, with a reset. So I would say challenge yourself to do 10 days of eating no processed foods and eating all organic foods and just feel how different you feel. How much How much would we spend on a shop of organic food? So for example, if you order from, from a farm, so for exa- example, Riverford Farm. What is it? Riv- can, river food? Riverford. I can R- type it in the chat. <laughs> oh, Riverford, like river and in food. River Ford. I'll river type it, I'll Ford, type it like in the like the chat. car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> river Ford, like the car. Got it, got it. Um, so you can buy a large mixed fruit and veg box Mm -hmm. for 25 pounds how long would that last you what like Um, how how many meals like one meal two meals no I get one of them every two weeks what do you mean I order one of those every two weeks and it lasts me for two weeks what and then you eat out of that every day yeah how (laughs) because they're big like they're big really fruit and veg yeah and then how do you know what to prepare? Like, do you already know by experience or do you get creative? Um, I've got recipe books. Sometimes oh. I get creative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's that's amazing. I love it. I saw one of your posts and it was on water fasting. Yeah, yeah. That is something I have done previously. It's very difficult, okay? Yeah. It's, not, it's not for the faint-hearted, but it is something that I would recommend easing into slowly because the problem is, again, with our society is we've been told that eating three big meals a day mm-hmm. with snacks mm-hmm. in between is good for us, but actually that causes our body to be under so much stress. Mm-hmm. We don't need that. We don't need that, and that's why we're getting sick a lot because our immune system is compromised when our body is constantly trying to digest the food that we eat so by stopping eating for certain periods of time you actually allow your body to start healing itself because it's not busy digesting food I love it I love it what's the What's the longest fast you've been on? I did a water fast for uh, how long? 70 hours. 70? Mm-hmm. So almost three days. Did you have a blackout? No. Like, like what do you do? Like, just meditate? Like, like what do you do? Just like, go for walks. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. And then, and then ha- like, to have a, a fast for that long... How long did it take you to build it up? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I would start off with 12 hours. Okay. So just for one day. So for example, you would eat dinner one day at say 5 p.m. Okay. And then and then not eat until the following day. Well, yeah, until the following day. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, just yeah. try it like that. And then just build it up more and more. So just do a little bit more, go from 12 hours to 24 hours and then to 36 hours and then to 48 hours. But the really important thing with water fasting is that you need to prepare your body before, because otherwise you're going to get detox symptoms. And these come from things like caffeine, from sugar and from processed foods. So if you're planning on doing a water fast, mm-hmm. which means just not eating and only drinking water mm-hmm. for anyone that doesn't know, the most important thing is just two or three days before mm-hmm. cutting out sugar, caffeine, alcohol, and cigarettes, because otherwise you're going to get a migraine. Yeah, Because yeah, your uh-huh. body's going to be like super detoxing when we do this. Wow, I love it. Chloe, tell me about the Women's Circle. Oh, amazing. Yeah, so this has been such a fun project. I mm-hmm. actually started this in the first lockdown. Mm-hmm. So when I came back to London from Indonesia because of COVID. So are you now friend. like, like so, okay, so before that you was working in Indonesia, you was running a resort. What yeah. happens? Will you go back or no? No, no. It's um, it's completely still closed there. And I've built up my own business now. In the last two years, I've become completely financially dependent. I've built up my business from scratch. So Congratulations, girl. Congratulations. Because first of all, it's not easy. Second of all, like you've had the willpower to do it. And third of all, like everyone's just jumped on furlough. So mm-hmm. for you to like be in a position where you can be spoiled and, and jump on furlough, you was actually like you did your own thing, girl. So I, I applaud you like you're an inspiration. 
thank you. I got bored of not working. I did it for about eight months. So I was like, yeah, I'm free. I'm not working. Mm. But I was like, no, I need to start thinking about the future. And actually right now is an incredible time to start building a business because there's so many people who are thinking about how are we going to make a better future than what we've got now? It's actually an incredible time. There's a lot of people who are coming together and being like, we need to make changes. We need to make things happen. So this was where the women's circle kind of fell into the mm-hmm. women's circle for me are kind of a side hustle because mm-hmm. it's something that I love doing it's not actually mm-hmm. a part of my main business but a very good fr- close friend of mine she's been joining women's circles for years so when I came back to the UK well, she what said, is that is that is is women's circle a brand or is women's no. circle a, a community of females yeah, it's a community of females. So one or two women will host a space. Got so it, it could be it. on Zoom or in person. We've been doing a bit of both. And in our women's circles, we involve meditation, mm-hmm. yoga, um, some journaling. We do like little workshops where we give our advice on how you can manifest things into your life or mm-hmm. how you can work through emotions. And then we all give the women a chance to share about something. Because, you know, as we said earlier talking about the abuse and the trauma and the the, you know the sexual abuse it's really important that we start talking about that and let go of that because that's how I've healed myself from it in the past few years is by opening up about it and talking about it so we create this safe space for other women to talk about things that they've experienced in their life with no judgment I love it I love it I, I think I think there's great power within within these circles because like you just help each other and and it's just different views and people coming together is such an inspiration what else did I see um oh my god so do you remember when we had to cancel last week because you was uh you was like oh I can't open up because I'm on the men- like my menstrual cycle start babe my menstrual yeah. cycle started that day like you know the oh, day really? we meant- you know the day we was meant to have the interview that's mm-hmm. the day my I came on and I was like oh Me my god too. Oh Me God, too. Is, is that like a coincidence? And I was just yeah. like, oh, what? We're and in alignment. Exactly, exactly. Uh, um, tell me about moon, moon. So you work a lot with the moon cycles, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, mm-hmm. how important is this? Oh my gosh, so important. So, 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 so important because yeah. for so many years of my life, I suffered with terrible menstrual cycles like really terrible PMS but also really really painful periods and I have Mm -hmm. to say this year is the first year of my life that I have pain-free periods how how did you ace it how did you how did you get it Mm -hmm. so in the beginning it was really understanding my cycle Mm -hmm. so I read an incredible book called Code Red by Lisa Lister oh my gosh it's so 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 good yes. it explains the different stages of your cycle right and I code you know, red I do code red yeah mm-hmm. it's so good it's incredible it's amazing it also gives you kind of herbal remedies and stuff wow. that you can use at different stages of your cycle but um it encouraged me to start journaling my cycle so every single day so day one is the first day that you start bleeding Mm -hmm. and so on and so forth and it's between 26 and 30 days is the average woman's cycle mine's 26 days it's quite a short cycle some women have longer cycles Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so I started doing this started diarying it and then I started really understanding why some certain days of the month everything in the world felt really overwhelming And then the next day I would feel fine or why some days I would feel like I really needed to eat a lot of food to give me energy. It really helped me to understand myself and work with myself. And then working with the superfoods has really helped me to have pain free periods, because, again, when you're not eating inflammatory foods, you don't get inflamed. And when you when you're actually bleeding, that is the woman, the woman's way of cleansing her body. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have much physically and emotionally and mentally to cleanse from your body, then you're going to have a lot less pain around this time of the cycle um but the reason why I wanted to postpone until this week Mm -hmm. is because you learn about your cycle so when you're in the stage 
after you've been bleeding this is like the springtime so it's like when you're coming out of your mm-hmm. shell when you have all of this energy but you know leading up to your bleed time and during your bleed that's when you really go inwards and okay. you kind of be on your own and do self-healing so for me I just know in myself I wouldn't have been able to speak so confidently yeah yeah I love time. it I love it I love it I'm gonna look into it because because there's so much for me to learn I have like really painful periods and like last month I I, I had like a period I couldn't even handle but then I was using tampons this this month it it was better I stopped tampons and then I want to see if I can use a menstrual cup but I've struggled to put that inside so you know maybe next month Um, I use um I use reusable bamboo pads reusable bamboo pads I didn't even know Mm -hmm. such a thing existed is is it good Yeah. yeah really good Mm-hmm. yeah I'm gonna you just you, you just wash them as well and they're made out of bamboo but they're, they're like sanitary pads but they're made of fabric oh, okay I'm gonna look into it but I have a heavy flow it doesn't matter no it's fine because yeah. they're really thick oh yeah. okay mm-hmm. yeah um you're a kundalini yoga instructor where did you get where did you do your training in India oh in- girl really yeah yeah <laughs> I have yeah. a lot of people that want to go to to do their yoga and instru- why 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 is that in your in India so I chose India because that's where yoga originated mm-hmm. from so I wanted to choose the place where it was going to be the most authentic style of teaching and you know it's the Himalayan style so and I chose it um in the area of India where yoga actually Um, originated which is incredible like just right by the Himalayas I wanted that authentic style of teaching you know I wanted to know what where it originated from Mm -hmm. and yeah it was it was simple but it was powerful so I would definitely encourage people to learn in India learn from the source how long how long was the training uh two months two months wow Mm -hmm. that's quick yeah Mm -hmm. wow is there short is is there is there short course and long courses or how does it work um I think for an instructor you have to do you there's a minimum of 200 hours which is can be one month I think or you can do long you can do up to 500 hours but this is intensive so this is at like uh, six days a week oh girl that is intense that's very very intense I love it Chloe what inspires you Ooh, what inspires me yeah. wow <laughs> what inspires me is seeing other people healing themselves I love it because that's something that I've been through and where I'm proud of myself it's hard for me to see my own journey you know so when I see other people's healing journeys like other women who's who've healed from sexual trauma or other young people who've healed from drug and alcohol addiction Mm -hmm. that inspires me it inspires me so 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 much because I know how hard it is to get out of those situations so it literally just fills my heart so much and like I just love celebrating other people's healing and other people's success and that's everything that I do with my work and my business is to help inspire and empower people to heal themselves I love it girl what is your favorite book oh wow (laughs) um a really good one that I read was food of the gods by Terence McKenna oh sounds powerful Mm -hmm. yeah it's good so it's all about kind of the history of plant medicine in our society yeah really interesting and Terence McKenna is was an advocate he's dead now he's passed away he was an advocate for plant medicine in the 70s and he was just really revolutionary of his time Um, and it also talks about the history of sugar and tobacco Mm -hmm. and how it was actually created to in a sense control our society as a substance it's very interesting wow Mm -hmm. wow it opens my eyes to a lot of things in the world yeah 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 no um another female also recommended me a book I don't know how she explained it but she said back in the day sugar was seen as a form of wealth like depending like they would have like statues and of of depending on and that's why all the rich men had like no teeth because it was Mm -hmm. a sign of wealth and they could afford sugar um yeah uh, what advice would you give to your younger self? Like knowing where you are now, look at how healthy you are. You're glowing. Um, you're living your life's purpose. You're, you're at peace. You're healthy. You're sober. What advice would you give to your younger self? The most advice that I wish I could give to my younger mm-hmm. self is that don't take anyone else's advice. Listen to yourself. Because I was so 
influenced by what other people told me was right or what was good for me that I never listened to myself so I was constantly searching for happiness Mm -hmm. outside of myself but I wish I had listened to myself because nobody knows what's best for you other than yourself I love that we all hold the answers within us Chloe what does the dragonfly mean the dragonfly so I like to think that my spirit animal is dragonflies and butterflies I find something really mystical about them you'll see I've got lots of butterflies oh. there on my back do you always well. see them do you always see butterflies and, and I dragonflies? always see them yeah I always mm-hmm. see them and I always feel very drawn to them and it's always quite a magical moment for me when I see dragonflies and butterflies and for me they really represent transformation Mm. you know because the butterfly comes from the caterpillar and it's in the cocoon for so long and that's really how I feel like I was my younger self just in this in this shell so shy and then finally you spread the wings and you fly and you find freedom when you transform so that's what it represents for me Girl, that is amazing. If only I asked people about the tattoos and they could give me something meaningful like that. But sometimes I see people with pineapples on their arm and I'm like, what does it mean? And it's like, well, you know, it's, it's just a pineapple. And I'm like, it all means something. Like, you know, okay. Um, Chloe, tell me about your services. Tell me how can we get to know you? How can we connect with you? The best way is through Instagram. So that's my main social media mm-hmm. handle. That's where I post all of my content. I do a lot of live videos on there. Um, I organize a lot of Zooms as mm-hmm. well. I don't have a mailing list or anything. Like the best way to contact me. Will you me. start one? I, I can do, yeah, but I think I need a PA. <laughs> Girl, it's hard, you know. I like, know. <laughs> un- honestly, I struggle sometimes, but oh yeah we we get in there we get in there yeah um I use yeah I use Instagram because that's kind of always been my my thing you know it's always been my handle and I post I share everything on there so and I, I always answer every single dm that gets sent to me oh that's so you good girl you're so good <laughs> what other what services do you have so you do the women's circle do you do coaching yeah okay so I do I, I host the women's circles and we do one in-person women's circle a month at the moment and that's always in London where, um, where in London usually in Wimbledon so southwest London Ew, but the location ain't, changes ain't you posh Chloe <laughs> it's because my friend lives around there so it's easy like, for us super to. posh <laughs> lovely okay so so that's what that's part of women's circle and then what yeah. else so I teach yoga and meditation mm-hmm. um and this I could do online I was doing in person but I don't live in London anymore I live in around Oxford area so mm-hmm. I'm doing online those are private and group sessions so again if anyone wanted to know about those how does it work a group session like on zoom um so it would be like a workshop so I would lead a workshop Whereas on one on one would be a lot more interactive, but in a workshop, I would be leading it and kind of make, doing the demonstration of the postures and guiding people through it. Um, and I usually advertise those on my Instagram as through well. For meditation? For, is that for mm-hmm. meditation? Yeah. I, f- I fall asleep during meditation. <laughs> That's good. That means you're relaxed. Is, is that good? I don't yeah. know. I don't know if I'm getting enough out of it. Does that make sense? But you, your subconscious mind can still listen to the guidance, even if you fall asleep. Ah, you're mm. smart. Um, <laughs> what about coaching? Tell me about your coaching. Yeah, so I do coaching through the nutrition company. Mm-hmm. So I help to coach people to completely transform their lives like I have. So I've transformed my physical, mental and emotional health through superfoods. So I help people transform their health. And then if they want to turn this into a business, I can help to empower them to become entrepreneurs in the same way that I have as well. I love it. I love it. What can we expect for this new year? Like anything? How can we support you? Anything? Any ebooks? Would you ever write a book? I have actually started one. Congratulations, yeah. girl. I <laughs> love it. You. Congratulations. <laughs> got your got got your head in the game. Like we've already started before the new year. Yeah, I've started one. It's just a very much of a side project at the moment. (laughs) Um, Things you can see from me are going to be a lot more mega zooms. So I want to do a lot more interactive zooms for women. So talking about some of the things we've been talking about today, like the taking our power back and talking freely about sex and abuse and trauma and really just holding spaces for women so I'm going to be 
all seeing a lot more of these zooms because I feel like I need my project for the new year is really holding spaces for young women and young men also in terms of drug addiction and um, substance abuse. So I'm going to be hosting the Zoom events and all these Zoom events that I do are free. So they're open for anyone to join. It's just a chance for me to offer information and guidance for anyone. And if they resonate with that, they can contact me and we can talk one on one and I can just give guidance and give give the solutions that I've found in my life. Oh, Chloe, that's amazing. I love it. I love it. Chloe, is there anything else? Okay. Is there anything? <laughs> is there anything you want to say before we end? I would just say that with everything that's going on in the world right now, now is the time to take your health into your own. Now is the time. There are so many incredible su- support groups out there. There is so many incredible foods and plant medicines things are so readily available for us you can take health into your own hands all you have to do is start making choices that are good for you and just start seeing yourself because you deserve it wow chloe chloe thank you for being you thank you for being like thank you for being that inspiration you're so bubbly your voice is so soothing like just a fountain of knowledge even with the books even with just everything and it's like everyone that comes towards you will take something away whether it be like in any area whether it be transformational mind body or soul anything people always learn and I look forward to your book launch I'll be forward listen you you, Chloe you could easily launch like five books like there's so much content you have inside (laughs) that you could easily launch like five books honestly because it's all life experience everything we go through to now be where we are today is what makes us us and that's our superpower our superpower is how many times did we get up not the amount of times we fell like flat on our face so yeah girl I know Chloe thank (laughs) you so much for coming on gentle touch thank you so much for being a part of today's episode thank you so much for finally being able because it was like a bit of like let's schedule let's schedule let's schedule it's been busy but we've done it I want to say thank you so much and this is this is why I hold gentle touch like to have guests 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 on the show like you because girls are scared like girls will now listen to us and they'll be scared they'll be like oh my god like wow because it is scary when you're alone it is scary when you have no one to speak to but it's like we are never alone and we everyone goes through things and it's okay it's about knowing that we can get help we can learn we can heal and we can let go of all that pain that guilt that shame and it's like at the end of the day we we can blossom into this beautiful flower at the end of it yeah oh I love that and thank you so much for having me I'm excited to share this podcast with so many people because there's been so many gems and diamonds that we've we've gone over in this conversation so thank you for holding the space for me and I'm I'm so happy that I know I think I think it was divine timing it was divine timing like today because our menstrual cycle got synced and then we postponed it yeah okay Okay? bye sweetie (laughs) thank you for today Bye. bye